In the previous session, we discussed about the, uh, the integrated risk management process what the commercial banks use, where we discussed about the vertical and the horizontal processes, which includes the, uh, uh, the top down and bottom up processes and as well as the transversal processes. And uh, there we see basically three things, one is we target the limit, we target the benchmark and as well as we try to take the decisions and the de periodically the decisions has to be monitored and if there is any kind of changes are required then corrective actions has have to be taken then the commercial banks again go back to uh, again recycling that particular process. In today's uh, sessions we will be discussing about uh, what are those different typical types of risk the commercial banks face and uh, uh, out of the different type of risk what the commercial banks face, the major type of risk is the credit risk and today's discussion is mostly we will focus on the credit risk and the sources of the credit risk, where the credit risk comes and what are those, uh, how to define the credit risk from the banking perspective. So, these are the major things what we are going to discuss in this particular session. You see, Whenever we talk about the banking, if you go by the Basel norms, what we will be discussing further or in the future. So, there are many types of risk the commercial banks face and there are typical risks the commercial banks face that may not be applicable to other business units in the particular system. Then what are those different types of risk the commercial bank faces? The commercial bank, the major risk the commercial bank face with credit risk. The reason is they provide the loans, then they also face liquidity risk because liquidity is very important to fulfill the requirement of the customers to cater the demand for the deposit withdrawals and all these things. Then we have a another problem is market risk, every organization in the financial system faces the market risk because if there are any changes in the economy then your balance sheet and profit loss accounts value gets affected. So, because of that the market risk is another issue what basically always we should consider and Vessel also has considered this market risk from the beginning. And today's context operational risk is quite natural, it is because of many reasons, because of technological failure, because of inefficiency of the employees and all these things. The operational risk is basically quite important in today's context. Even if other risk are to some extent quantifiable or visible, the operational risk is relatively very qualitative in nature, but still uh, we try to see that how the operational risk is basically really important from the banking perspective. Not only banking, it is also a very important risk from the any financial institutions or any organizational perspective. Reputational risk. Sometimes we lose the reputation because of certain thing and the customers or the clients of that particular organization lose the confidence on the organization and because of that it affects adversely the business. If business is adversely affected, then obviously the profit and other objectives of the organization also gets affected. So, because of that the reputation risk is quite important. Then we have legal risk. Uh, sometimes the expenditure on the legal aspects are quite huge, which adversely there are many court cases, many kind of legal formalities, the uh, uh, banks have to always uh, uh, follow or always face, because of that the cost also increases and once the cost increases that also creates the uh, problem in terms of the enhancement of the performance in the portfolio and as well as the other balance sheet aspects. So, whenever you define this, what exactly the risk is? The risk basically is a fundamental to the likelihood that current events or potential events will negatively affect an institution's profitability and the market value of these assets, liabilities and stockholders equity. It is a, it is a, it is a very broader definition, but in general sense what is the risk? The risk is basically what this is the, the uns, uh, this probability of not getting something. What is the probability that I may incur a loss of this much? 
but I know some historical distribution of that data by looking at the past events and all. Then I try to measure that what is the probability that this particular objective will not be realized. So, that basically is the general definition of the risk, but whenever you talk about uncertainty, the uncertainty is basically not predicted, but the risk to some extent can be predicted because there is a probability distribution of the risk which is existing, but whenever you talk about the uncertainty that is not possible. But what definition here we are talking about? that there is some probability that my balance set, my stakeholders, equity, stockholders equity, the value of my assets may be affected because of certain kind of changes which are happening in the external market and as well as the within the particular system. Some of the things are endogenous, some of the things are exogenous. So, in that context we have to see how those things are going to affect the profitability and as well as other objectives of the commercial bank. So, this is the way we are defining the risk in this particular context. So, today's discussion will be mostly focusing on the, uh, the first one that is basically your credit risk, because credit risk is most important aspect of the commercial bank. Then we have to see that how really the credit risk is measured and what do we mean by the credit risk and what are those different sources of the credit risk. So, this is basically is the today's discussion or in this particular session's discussion. What do we mean by the credit risk? If you, if you ask yourself, the credit risk is nothing but it is the potential variation in net income and market value of equity resulting from the non-payment or the delayed payment. You see, whenever we talk about the credit risk in the actual sense, how we define? Credit risk is nothing but we say that credit risk arises because there is a probability of default. So, probability of default is the major thing, which we will discuss these things in detail whenever we go for the measurement part. But from there, from the banking perspective, when we can say that credit risk is basically is affecting the uh, market value of the equity or the net income of the bank, then we can say that the bank is basically getting affected due to the non-payment or the delayed payment of the obligations whatever the customers have. A bank has given the loan and the customer has to repay the loan periodically. If the customer is not able to repay the loan periodically, then obviously, the commercial bank is facing the credit risk. How much is the risk? That actually is a uh, matter of calculations or the uh, technical part that we will discuss further, but this is the way the credit risk of the bank is uh, defined. So, this is basically associated with the quality of individual asset and the likelihood of default that already I told you that whenever we are providing the loan to whom we are giving the loan, whether that person's worthiness is there to repay the loan periodically or not and what is the probability of default or likelihood of default against that particular loan. That basically is highly linked to the measurement of the credit risk. Whenever a bank basically acquires the earning asset, it assumes that uh, it basically always knows uh, the bank knows that they are going to incur certain, there is a risk involved in that because there is a probability that borrower may default or they are not able to repay the principal or the interest on the timely basis. If a particular time period the interest or the principal is not repaid, then we can say that there is some kind of default against that particular asset. But when the bank provides the loan, the bank knows that they are basically prone to this kind of risk, they are also exposed to this kind of risk. But still bank has to give the loan because that is the asset of the bank and as well as the profit generation can be made only through that. So, because unknowingly banks, banks basically do that, but they go by a calculation that how much is the probability. So, whenever the banks basically evaluate the credit risk, they basically ask three basic questions they keep in their mind. One is what is the historical loss rate on the loans and investments? Historically, 
what is the loss rate the bank is incurring what is the expected loss in the future by looking the past they can predict that what is the expected loss in the future they can have then what is the and how the bank is prepared to overcome that losses so this is what basically three things bank consider whenever they evaluate the credit risk for that particular organization or any bank can consider these three questions what is the historical loss what is the expected loss and whether or how the bank is prepared for that particular losses or not if they are prepared for that loss but any chance the particular bank should not be liquidated the larger interest have to be taken care if larger interest has to be taken care then we have to see that how the bank is prepared basically to overcome that particular losses so if these three things are answered then the proper credit risk or credit policy can be uh, prepared for the commercial banks then in this context if you see that always already we told that there are three things always the bank consider the attention on the bank's historical loan loss experience bank basically always see then how basically they see that one or they consider that one one is gross loan losses which is basically called as the charge offs that means the dollar value of loans actually written off as uncollectible during a period because some of the assets cannot be written off and some of the assets can be written off so the loan losses what the banks are basically uh, trying to calculate the what is the loans basically actually written off as a uncollectible loan during a period so that historical data the banks have and the from the ex historical experience or historical data the banks basically always try to calculate the default rates the first component of that thing is gross gross loan losses they have to first find out or the charge offs then recovery the recovery is basically what the dollar amount of loans that were previously charged off but now collected uh, once in a while what happens that bank has thought the loan will not be recovered but all of sudden there is a chance that the somebody has started paying that possibility is there because of certain problem any customer was not paying the interest or the principal but now they started paying that if they started paying that now they can say that that is the recovery is they have written up before charged up before but now what is happening we are able to collect certain money against that then we have the net losses which is nothing but the difference between the gross loan losses and the recoveries the bank basically should consider the net losses instead of only talking about the gross loan losses so historically they have to consider they have to calculate the net loan losses for that particular bank then accordingly they can see that how much basically loss they have incurred over a period of time then keeping that thing in the mind they also can predict that how much loss they will have in the future so that's why they net losses is very important from that perspective so then expected future losses this is another component how basically they try to find out that one the expected future losses basically measured in this way the ratios that examine the expected future losses are based on the past due loans non accrual loans total non accrual loans and it is always a consider as a fraction of the total loans it is the ratio of all those loans to the total loans these are consider basically for calculating the expected future losses so how to define a past due loans the past due loans basically represents the loans for which the uh, contracted interest and principal payments have not been made but still accruing interest so they are basically separated into 30 to 89 past due and 90 days and over past due date so if anything is not paid for 30 days to 89 days we say that these are past due dates but if it is up to 90 days we consider that but if it is exceeding 90 days then that asset become a non performing asset so second one is the non accrual loans 
where those are accruing interest sorry those are not accruing interest and these loans are currently or maybe over the period of time become the past due or having some problems so loan is not basically or the interest on that particular loan is not basically the bank is able to collect so these are basically the non accrual loans then the total non 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 current loans or the if you talk about this is the past due loans for plus the non accrual loans so this is the way basically this data if you see then you can predict that how much loss you can going to incur in the future then we have another thing in the restructured loans what do you mean by the restructured loans sometimes the loans can be restructured in terms of maturity the loans also can be restructured in terms of the payment of the principal and loan also can be restructured with respect to the payment of the interest for example somebody has taken a 20 years loan with a interest rate of 9% uh then this particular customer wants to restructure that loan either they can reduce the maturity or they can always say that now the market interest rate has gone down i am not going to pay 9% it should reduce to 8% because other banks are paying the 8% interest so depending upon the credit worthiness of that particular customer the bank can restructure that loan or you say that i am going to i have taken a loan of 20 lakhs and i will pay of the 20 lakhs principal i can pay 10 lakhs immediately and i want to remain with only this 10 lakhs principal then also your uh, emi will be changed your interest rate will be changed your period will be changed there are different ways either the loan can be restructured in terms of the principal payment in terms of interest payment in terms of maturity so either of these ways this particular thing can be changed so that also will have the impact on the expected future losses then we have a classified loans the general category of loans for which the regulators are forced to set aside reserves for clearly recognized losses the loan provisions are made against this classified loans where the regulator or the bank is already have uh, calculated that what is the probability of loss or probability of default against that particular loan so because of that they want to keep certain provisions against that so if there is a loss then these provisions will be utilized to uh, overcome that particular losses for that particular bank some loans like the construction loan which are highly speculative which are riskier than others so generally we should examine the composition of the bank's loan portfolio and the magnitude of the past due non current non accrual restructured and classified loans relative to the total loans whenever we are predicting that how much future losses we are going to incur because the composition also quite important out of the 100% loans whatever you have maybe that out of them 50% is highly risky or 70% are highly risky this loans are given to a particular sectors particular industries where this industry itself is risky although return is reasonably high or in comparison to the returns from the other sectors are in this sector the returns are high but still there is a higher level of risk also involved in that so if because of there is high risk involved in that so we have to always think of that how much probability is there that this particular loan will be into the non performing category or there is a default against that particular recovery so in that sense we can assign the more uh, weights to that particular loan while considering this future losses for that particular commercial bank then we have another thing is uh, uh, regarding the write off or the charge of the things when the management expects to charge up the large amount of loans before that it will build up the allowance for the loan losses the provisions are also made because the the losses are huge so the large allowances if they want to keep if when they will keep that one if the asset quality is poor bank always keep more allowances more provisions and allowance should be large because charge of will depleted 
and bank with high allowances for loan losses and few past due, non accrual and non performing loans will not need all of the reserve to cover the charge offs which will be low. Such banks has reported provisions for the loan loss that are higher than the needed such that prior period net income uh, prior, prior period net income is too low. It is not in, it is basically is. Future profit measures should benefit once provisions are lowered. You see the provisions can be kept because there is a high losses. Sometimes also what we do, the provisions also are made, but the provisions are not really required. So, whenever the provisions are already there, so that can be used against this reserves whenever the bank needs. So, in that particular point of time, the bank is in a good condition because the reserves again further can be utilized to enhance certain kind of returns. So, because of that the indication keeping the high loan reserves as two, uh, two ways can be interpreted, it may be a good sim signal or it may be a bad signal. But mostly the allowances are kept or the provisions are kept on the basis of the losses, the provisions are not kept uh, to recover uh, basically to make the balance sheet stronger in, 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 in a practical sense. Then uh, another thing is that the preparation for the losses, how if there is a probability of risk, there is a credit risk, how we prepare ourselves or the bank prepares themselves for the losses. So, ideally the what the management basically should do, they should relate the size of the loan loss reserve to the non-current loans which represents the potential charge offs. So, there are certain guidelines which help us to do that thing. Like reporting guidelines basically require that banks loan reserve to be adequate to cover the known and inherent risk in the loan portfolio. Any bank cannot say that we cannot uh, keep that much reserve because they are that is bound for them to keep that reserve if historically we know that there is some kind of loss which is going to happen to that particular commercial bank or the commercial banks are exposed to the credit risk. So, how we can basically do that or measure that one is earnings coverage of the net loan losses that is basically nothing but the ratio which is used to measure the bank's ability to cover the current period losses, how much earnings basically is are there or we can generate which can cover the losses of that particular period. So, it is a measure of net operating income before taxes, the security gains or the losses, uh, extraordinary items and the provisions for the loan losses divided by the net loan or the lease losses. So, it indicates how many times the current earnings can cover the current net charge offs. So, if the current earnings are really able to cover up the charge offs, then we are not that much exposed to any kind of credit risk or the losses in the future. So, higher ratio signals greater coverage that means the banks is the particular bank is highly protected against any kind of losses. So, the probability of credit risk for that particular bank is relatively lesser than the other banks whenever this uh, uh, earnings coverage ratio is relatively higher. Then we have the uh, sources of the credit risk. What are those different sources basically are there which creates the credit risk for this particular system. So, there are different type of assets and off balance sheet activities of the different kind of default probabilities. We know what do you mean by off balance sheet items? Off balance sheet items includes the guarantees, the letter of credit, then you have the consulting services, then you have the mortgage services leasing there are different ways the uh, off balance sheet items are defined or the investments in the derivatives instruments and all. So, whenever we talk about this what basically we are trying to see that how or which are the sources so which are those kind of activities which basically create more credit risk for that particular system. Historically it is observed that the loans which is the major asset of the commercial bank, they exhibit the greatest credit risk. 
the credit risk is huge, credit risk is the highest whenever you talk about the uh, loans activities. And another thing also sometimes it may not be predicted, but if there is a change in the economic conditions or the firms operating environment that also affect the debt paying capacity of the other organizations in the system who has taken this particular loan from the commercial bank. If the economic condition change, then the profit and other things gets affected for the other commerce, other organizations, other industries, other companies who have taken the loan from the bank. And that particular point of time, it may not be possible for them to repay the loan. So, because of that what happens that the credit risk increases for the commercial bank, which is difficult to predict. As we know that prediction of macroeconomic conditions, particularly the interest rate fluctuations and all is relatively difficult. But all of a sudden if there is some kind of changes have happened in the market, the conditions got deteriorated, then that will have the adverse impact on the uh, debt payment capacity of that particular uh, organization and obviously, the bank will be exposed to more credit risk. An individual's loan if somebody has taken that individual's ability to repay the debt basically varies with the change in employment and personal net worth. And obviously, economic conditions also affect the individual loans, the job opportunity the growth opportunity in the system that also play a very significant role whenever we are talking about the uh, repayment of the loans whatever the individuals have taken from the bank that also exposed to more credit risk in the particular system. Then another major source is the off balance sheet items that already told you the off balance sheet items include the loan commitments, the guarantee and as well as derivatives contracts. And derivatives contracts are one of the riskiest instruments which are used in the financial system to hedge the risk, but sometimes also we face the problem because of certain complexities which is involved in that. So, the prospective borrower and the counterparties must perform or the bank may take a loss, then that time what basically will happen that it is very difficult that how we can collect those data, those kind of data may not be available. So, whenever this kind of data is not available, then what happens that whatever assessment the banks do for providing the loan commitments or guarantees, so then the bank will be in the trouble. So, because of the information asymmetry and uh, there is a clear gap between the uh, different stakeholders, sometimes also the bank provides this of balance sheet services, but still there is a probability that we may incur certain losses against that. So, that cannot be predicted also beforehand. And another thing is that uh, the geographic, the concentration of the loan to a particular industry. If the banks are providing the loan to a particular industry largely and there is something goes wrong with that particular industry, then also banks are exposed to more credit risk because the particular industries are not diversified while providing the loans to the industrial sector. So, that is why the lack of diversification which affect the majority of the bank's portfolio uh, and these banks are subject to risk that are rest on the banking industry is not subject to uh, in its operations. So, diversification is very important that whenever you talk about the diversification we mean that the loans which are disbursed that has to be disbursed to uh, all type of industries which are operating in the system that should not be concentrated only on a particular segment. By that if there is something goes wrong in one industry then at least the recovery can be made in another industry or the returns can be realized from the another industry. So, the concentration should be avoided while providing the loans. Uh, then also we can say that sometimes the uh, bank lend to the foreign governments and there is some kind of corporate borrowers who have the exposure to the external market. So, in that time also if there is something goes wrong in the international scenario, 
they are also suffering from uh, any kind of or they are exposed to more credit risk due to the government controls over the actions, internal, internal politics. So, these are a part of the country risk what we call it. If there is any kind of political instability, general market disruptions or anything can happen which is happening all over the world and because there is a globalized economy and we are living in a particular state which are highly integrated, the markets are integrated, then we are also exposed to more credit risk in that particular sense. So, uh, this is the discussion on the credit risk. So, financial institution must assume risk in order to earn optimal returns that already we know. High performing institutions are those that manage and control the risk the best, uh, the issues of risk return trade off. A low risk position is not always low performance position and a high risk position is not always a high performance position. High risk uh, credit risk manifests itself through significant loan charge offs. The sources of credit risk arise from both balance sheet and the off balance sheet operations of the commercial bank. So, these are the major things what we have discussed in today's session. These are the references what we can uh, you can go through for the detailed analysis. Thank you.